All right, welcome again. And today the Hive is going to be taking care of um, the training and presenting the training today. So I will hand it over um, to, to you guys. Thank you very much, Angie. And thank you for the others on the line for joining us. Um, we're very happy to be here with you and uh, share with you uh, our data loading strategies and tools that we have developed and tools that we use to get data into Transmart. Um, I think, first of all, it's maybe a good moment to say that we try to focus today on loading data into Transmart 16.2. Um, there is a beautiful new version of Transmart upcoming, uh, the Transmart uh, 17.1, um, which will have many other data modeling features, also around uh, loading samples and time series which is very exciting, but right now we'll focus on the tooling that's there for the 16.2 platform, since that is the latest released uh, version at this point. But definitely keep an eye out for the, for the newer features coming up. So my name is uh, Ward Weistra. I uh, uh, lead the data warehousing uh, circle department in uh, The Hive. And I'm here with my colleague, colleague Jochem. Yeah, so my name uh, is Jochem Beiluit. And I'm a project manager and data scientist here at Hive, work mainly with uh, Transmart. And so maybe this is a good point also to introduce the Hive. So we're uh, a company. Uh, we grew up in the Netherlands as a company, um, but we also have offices in Singapore and in uh, Cambridge, UK, uh, US. And we are a company focused around open source bioinformatics software. So we um, deliver all kinds of services around platforms like Transpart and like CBioport or I2B to many other platforms out there. And we only, um, we only deliver the services around it and all the software that we develop is open source. So also all the tooling today that we'll show around Transpart is open source. And we've been active in the Transpart community for, for a long time. Um, and uh, we've done a lot of development, a lot of data loading in there. So that's what we want to share with you today. Um, Please let us know if there are any questions uh, at any point. Um, we have a panel where your questions should show up. So please, uh, please inform us there. Um, so with that, I'll get started. So we're focused on transport data loading with TMTK, the Arborist and Transmart Batch. This is all tools that we'll get into in a moment. So our agenda for today, we'll start with a quick introduction on what um, the process of data loading and um, ETL, extract, transform, load, is all about and what the strategies are that you can use and what the tools there are that we can, uh, can offer there. Um, and then we'll go into the loading file formats, um, which uh, formats you need to get your files in to get them into Transmart. And that's basically an introduction and then we'll switch to a demonstration. And we'll show in this demonstration how we get data from tabular files into uh, tools that we've developed, how we can model them, and how we can load them into Transmart. So we'll start with our Python package, TMTK, doing that. We'll show how we have a visual editor to edit the tree. And we'll also show the templates that we have developed within HealthRI, uh, a Dutch research project that we're active in, um, that can help you uh, work with your data owners to get uh, data modeled in the correct way for Transmart. We'll quickly show some future developments and then uh, we'll end up with some uh, dedicated time for questions. So let's kick it off with the introduction here. Um, the data strategy, uh, data loading strategies and tools that you can use. So first, let me introduce what it's all about, data loading. So I think you've probably, uh, if, you're, if you're here, if you find this, uh, this recording or whether if you're, if you're here at, the, at our live webinar, um, this is probably the challenge that you're up against. You have data files um, that your data, uh, your, your researchers or your uh, people in the clinic have uh, developed. And this data needs to be shown in Transmart. So people can share this with colleagues, um, can standardize it, um, and they can perform all kinds of analysis on it, either within Transmart or within all the tools connected via the API to Transmart. So this is the process of ETL. You extract it out of one format, you transform it into the format that Transmart needs, and then you load it into Transmart so people can, can see it. So that's extracting transform load. Um, we have a set of tools to do that. 
um, to validate your input files, to transform them to the Transmart format, and then load them in the data. And there's all kinds of uh, functionalities that we have developed that you can use for this. So how to calculate uh, specific uh, log intensity or z-scores that you um, have from your high-dimensional data. Um, there's checks to be done that uh, we have the right, uh, uh, the right uh, values in there. Check if all the data is in the correct order um, and it's loaded well. Um, we have to merge multiple files and get them in. And then to do this all, we have a set of tools that you can choose from. And they all have uh, their own uh, input formats, organizations, and parent files. And then um, we finally get them into the tables for Transmart. So we'll focus on um, a set of tools um, that we work with every day. But there are multiple strategies that you can use to get your data in. And I think this is a good point to think about your data sets and think um, to what kind of uh, paradigm they adhere. So if you have a very large skill set, uh, skill data set, and you have this data set coming in over time and it will be updated all the time, um, then it might be sensible to invest the time to create a dedicated pipeline for that. Um, you don't want to do the manual mapping all the time. You want to have it reproducible. You want to have it automatic. And then it might make sense to really develop a custom pipeline. So this is what we do with uh, a lot of our uh, customers to have a custom Python pipeline to get from the input files to the Transmart files and then load those with Transmart batch. Um, but this is a strategy that only makes sense if you indeed have those large scale, large formats, um, large volumes of data, and they need to be coming in in the same format because otherwise you can, of course, not really make a pipeline based on that. So if you have those smaller scale files, you have uh, research files coming from many different uh, parts of the clinic or parts of the, of the, of the organization. And people use different formats for those and use different terminologies. Then it makes a lot of sense to uh, use the tools that we'll show today. Um, so Transmart Batch is, is, a, is a stable factor in both of those. That's the loading tool, tool of choice that we use. But here you have um, a lot of tools developed that can help you with the manual process of getting that data in the right format. So to make sure that you don't have to remember too much uh, Transmart specific logic, but have some tools to do that for you. So first of all, we have um, some Excel kind of templates that you can use to really bring the power to the data owner to curate the data. So they can get it in the right format there and they can already specify how they, they want the transport tree to look like. Um, so that's a really powerful thing to uh, make sure that the data owner is happy with the end result. Then we have a Python package that can, for example, be used to read in those template files if the data owner filled those in, or you can directly read in a raw data files. And you can perform some common transformations on that and you can even start the loading process from there. So that's really useful. That's something that we'll demonstrate later today. Um, then we have a tool that can also do this, but then help. Around, you can rename uh, values and variables. Uh, and you can store these new versions. So this is a really useful way to, to collaborate with the data owner. That's something we'll also quickly show today. And then finally, you still need to use a tool to get it from, um, from the, the staging files that you made um, into Transmart. Uh, and we use Transmart Batch from that, and we can even from the Python package that we have uh, call Transmart Batch to load the data. And that's what Jochem also showed. So think about these strategies, and we'll mainly cover the second part here. Um, but what you learn here will be really useful if you later want to do the larger scale uh, curation there. So there are multiple tools um, that are out there to load data into Transmart. I just want to have that mentioned here. Um, you have the, the Kettle scripts that are developed. Um, you have the TM Data Loader that our colleagues from uh, from uh, formerly Thomson Reuters and now Clarivate uh, uh, did a lot of work on. And then you have Transmart Batch, and that's a tool that we uh, prefer to use, and it's also a tool that we've developed on a lot. 
Um, and that's also what we showed today. But just know that there are more strategies out there. And transport batch is really useful to, to be combined together with uh, Arborist. Um, and that's what we'll get into. Transport batch, um, just like many of the other loaders, takes two types of files. You have your data files, the files that you um, uh, got from your data owner. And you need to have some mapping files together with that to tell the loading tool how this data needs to end up in transport. So what type of data is it? What, um, how does the tree need to look like that you want your data structured in? Um, do you want the values exactly as they were in the data files or do you want some transformation on that? So that's what you tell with the mapping files. And we'll get closer into that in a moment. And then you have really, this, this is the input for transport batch. And then transport batch was developed by us here at the Hive. It's built in Groovy and Spring, uh, which are some frameworks. And it will, will bring your um, data directly into the final schemas that transport needs. So um, it will not use temporary schemas in the middle. It will just load it directly into, um, into uh, the, the final tables. And it uses uh, an extra, um, um, as I call the schema, mm -hmm. in, um, in Oracle uh, or in Postgres, in your database. Um, and uh, it will uh, use that to keep track of the loading jobs that you gave it. So you can also restart a loading job if it stops halfway. OK, um, so that's about Transport Batch and then TMTK. I've mentioned a few times in the Arborist too. TMTK is the Python package uh, that we'll show later today, which you can use and we'll also show how to install it. And then the Arborist is the graphical user interface um, to, to work with the tree. So you can see a small screenshot here. For the flow of how to work with TMTK and the Arborist, we also made a poster that we presented earlier this year at the conference, the ITB to Transport Conference at Harvard. Um, we'll share the slides later with you, and there's a link also to the source, so definitely check that out. Um, it has just the flow that we'll also quickly show today, how to get from your Excel files to the data loaded in Transport. And then I think it's probably for the first part of the introduction, my final slide, maybe the one bit final. Um, there's many different data types that you can load to the Transmart. And some tools have support for some data types and not for the others. I think Transmart Batch by now supports um, all the core data types. Um, so that's why we love to use it. Um, but there might be some niche data types that uh, you would want to prefer another data loader for. Okay, so now we have an overview of what the ETL process is all about. Um, and we've shown you that there are multiple tools out there that you can use, and there's automatic strategies that you can use, and there's manual strategies. And now it's time to focus on those strategies that we use and the tools that we mentioned that we chose for. Um, and we'll see what we need to do to get there. So we'll give an overview of the files that you need to use first, and after that we'll go to the demonstration. So this is where it starts with your data files. You have data in Excel or in some other tabular format, and that is what we're going to bring into Transmart. Here you see an example of clinical data. So you see you have here one row per patient. In this case, they're, um, they're cell lines, but normally those are one row uh, per patient. And then we have columns for all the different variables that we want to load. So this is what we need to have end up in the tree. And then what you see here is an example of a high dimensional data file. So you see here um, that this is uh, um, for um, each probe, you have a value for each patient in uh, or each sample actually in the data set. So as you can see from this, this is the data files that your, your data owners will probably provide you with and that you want to get into Transmart. But of course, we need to tell Transmart some more. For example, how do all these variables need to be structured in a data tree? Or for example here, how do these samples match up to the subjects that I have on a clinical data site? So that's why we use some extra mapping files to tell the loader tool how it needs to end up in Transmart. So first of all, you will start with a column mapping file. 
and this is what you just see on the clinical data file. So we have here a file name that we specify, and then for each column in the file name, in the, in the tabular file, we will specify the path, we'll specify the path um, where it needs to end up in the tree for Transmart. And we can also um, give it a different name uh, than it has in the, in the column header. So you see that you can, in principle, make this file by yourself in, uh, uh, just in a text editor, but you will also directly see that this is a very laborious task, uh, especially if you want to make some changes later. So that's why we have those tooling around it to help you make those files. And the same is true for these parameter files, the parameter files, and they will tell you, for example, okay, which data file do I need to use, what's my mapping file, etc. Um, and then for um, the high dimensional data, we need to specify things like, okay, the sample ID that you find in the high dimensional data needs to be linked to the subject ID that I have in my clinical data here. So it's the subject sample mapping. And there's also the same path where it needs to end up in Transmart. And then finally, this is an annotations file. So for the high dimensional data file that I show here, I have all kinds of probes and I need to tell Transmart or the loading tool where do we do need the probes need to be mapped to, to, to which genes? So I can later search in Transmart on those genes. Um, so this is a lot of parameter files and mapping files that we need to generate. And we want to help you not make those by hand, but um, make those um, with the tooling that we've provided. So I'll give you, uh, again, I'll share this later and you have the link to the, to the formats where they're specified here. So it's always good to know, but we'll, now get into the demonstration of how to use those tooling. There are two steps to the demonstration here. Um, first, we'll show Jochen will take this over and show in Jupyter, in Jupyter Notebooks, how you can work with this Python package and load in your data and bring it into Transmart. And then we'll show you the vision. I just quickly want to check the, um, the go to meeting to see if there are any questions or chats that I need to respond to right now. Okay, not yet. Very good. Maybe it's a, a good time to ask a question, if, whether uh, those online have uh, loaded data before are familiar with the formats. Yeah, so we'll definitely are interested to know that. So if you could please share a little bit of your uh, experience and, uh, and any questions that you have in the chat window or in the question window. Uh, I prefer that, um, but maybe we shouldn't wait too long at this point. No, let's, uh, let's do this asynchronously. Um, so please fill those in in the in the, in the form and in in the in the go to webinar, and we'll go back to that in a moment. And I'll hand it over to you. Yeah. Thanks. So, so where are we? Where are we? That's a good question. Let me first start in the Jupyter notebook. <clears throat> So, those that don't know, this is uh, Jupyter Notebook. If you're working with data, this is a great tool. What it allows you to do is uh, create cells with code of uh, many languages. Uh, it started with Python, but there's uh, R supported now, Julia, and others. And what it is, it's um, a list of cells that you can execute. So, to give an indication of uh, what you can do, this is this is a Python notebook, and I can execute this cell, and then it gives me my output. It also has markdown support, so you can write your documentation uh, right with the code. This is, uh, this is a great open source tool if you don't use it yet um, with your data, and you should definitely try it. But the only reason we're showing it today is basically because we want to show you the Python package uh, DNTK. And this is just a, an editor we like to use. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so indeed, indeed, it's a nice editor, and it allows for integrating with web technologies. But we'll get to that. <clears throat> so for today's demonstration, what I want to do is uh, load uh, load some tabular files from uh, from Excel, convert them into uh, transmit batch files, validate them, and save them to disk and then load them to transmart yeah so we'll do the full the full round trip from data files 
to loading into Transmart. You already have your Transmart open here on the second window. Oh yeah. Um, Maybe you can have a look. It's a local Transmart. So this is version 16.02? I think it's 16.1, but indeed it's uh, similar, but the process is the same. Okay. So we're going to, uh, to, to load a new study into the public studies. So we have uh, a decent size study, decode, and two other studies. We'll be adding one. Uh, the data files that we will be using are these. So we have cell line underscore clinical.txt. So this is our clinical data file. Yeah, so this is not the nicest representation of a tab delimited file, but uh, it will have to do. So this is the header of this file. There's a subject underscore ID, cell line name, organism, organ, or, origin tissue. So it has many, many columns and quite some data. So we'll hear, this is just a tabular file that I also showed just now. We have one row per subject, and then we have one column for per variable. variable. And so if your data is not in this format, we would really recommend to, to start with that, to bring it to this. Yep. So there's one file and then if there's another file. It's basically the sa the same thing. So one, uh, one row per, per subject and each column is a variable. There's yeah, a bit more case, columns. In this case, we're looking at non-high throughput molecular profiling data. Right, so this is uh, more measurements. So there's a bit more numeric values. Oh well. So <clears throat> what I want to do is I want to create all these files that Ward showed. So the, the column mapping file, the subject sample mapping files, the parameter files. I want to create them without actually going into a text editor and typing them myself. So this is what we built this uh, TMTK package for. To install this into your Python environment, you can just use pip. It, it's using uh, it's using pandas and numpy, but it uh, it will work for uh, Python 3.4 and up. Just using uh, a pip install. <clears throat> so let me just uh, go through the notebook here. First, importing the package. And what I then want to do is I want to create the the study object. But it's a central thing in this uh, TMTK package. It's an object representing uh, what can be loaded uh, as a study into Transmart. And in this case, I'm using uh, uh, the wizard for this. And I'm pointing this to the directory with the two uh, data files. So once I execute this, the, the, the package will look onto the, the file system, uh, see if there are any data files, and it allows me to select the data files that I want to add to this study. So in this case, I'm seeing uh, <clears throat> I'm seeing some uh, logging info that uh, the package is creating uh, uh, some files in temporary space, and it's uh, it's asking me uh, with which data files I want to add. So in this case, I want to add both. So I'm adding the zero thing first. Clicking enter. So now it's telling me I've added the, these two files as clinical data files to the study. So now we have a study object with both data files loaded um, in memory. Exactly. So one of the central uh, uh, files in, in the Transformer study is, uh, is the one Mark showed, but he went over quite quickly, is the, is the column mapping file. It, it allows you to uh, point the columns in your data file towards a certain path in the tree. Yeah, we can actually just quickly show it in the uh, presentation again. Yeah, I'll show it in the. Oh, okay. So, I'll, I... so this this column. Yeah, yeah. just yeah. yeah. Yeah, here. Let's let's do this. <clears throat> so here you can see what the um, the package did. It's uh, it's the column mapping file with the uh, file name, the path in this column the column number and the data file, and then the label. So this is an automatically generated column mapping file, just based on the data that it read, right? Exactly, so it automatically goes through the data files that you've selected, checks what is the column header, and adds, uh, for each column header, it adds a row in this data file. 
And in this case, you see some uh, funny indexes that uh, the package uses. Um, <clears throat> so this is probably not precisely how you want the data to end up eventually, but it's a good start to, to start your modeling. Exactly, you could load this, yeah. potentially. Uh, but we're going to check for that. So this is uh, quite a long file, and as you can see, it's 75 rows. This means if you have to edit this by hand, then you're going to, going to have a bad time. So I'm just uh, removing it. <clears throat> so next up is when you want to load something into Transmart, you need to add some uh, basic parameters. You can read about that in the in the Transmart batch uh, documentation that we're uh, uh, sending uh, after the after the workshop. But here are here are the main ones. So we need to give it uh, the study a demo uh, study ID, and this is the internal identifier that's used uh, in, in in Transmart on which many things are based, for instance, security. Um, <clears throat> then we're going to have to specify whether we want this study to be public or not. And here I'm uh, specifying it to be uh, to be open. And we can give it a name. So let's... Uh, so this is a pretty human-readable name, right? Yes, indeed. So this will this is the name that will end up in the, in the tree. Um, we're, we're just going to call this uh, cell lines Maybe the training in there. Training, yeah. Uh, created for training. A good name. Maybe we should update the study ID too. Yeah. Training. Okay. That's good. So we're adding that. <clears throat> and then we're going to validate this. So what this does, it goes through uh, the data files, the parameter files, all the configuration files, and checks whether there are any uh, problems that it can find. It, do, it does not find everything, but it finds uh, quite a bit. So <clears throat> here you see for uh, the clinical parameter file, there are two problems or three problems. Uh, the first two are because there are no is no subject ID for these two files. So, so in, sure, go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. So in the column mapping file. You do not only specify which column goes where. You can also you also have to speci specify which column indicates your subject column. So if you don't do this, then Tran Transmart will not know which are your subjects, and the data would be uh, not attached to any subjects and not be able to be retrieved in Transmart. So and would also not be able to match the two different data files that we have onto each other. So which data belongs to the same subject? No, indeed. And it's also complaining that I've not saved uh, this clinical parameter file to disk, but that's that's all right. We're working in memory at this moment, so we've not uh, stored anything to disk. And the same for um, for these two files. So the column mapping file and the word mapping file are also not on disk yet. So there's two things we need to change. So we need to add the, the subject ID. Uh, to these, uh, these for these data files, and we need to save them to disk. So let's first add them at the subject IDs. So for this, I'm going to use the, the arborist, and I can call the arborist uh, right from the study object. In this case, I'm using a height parameter of 500, within, which indicates uh, the, the the height of the of the tool once it opens. If I open this, then uh, I'll enter the Arborist uh, editor window. So what you see here is a direct representation of what this study would look like in Transmart. So on the left, you see uh, the tree that you're used to in Transmart. And you see that it made a top level folder within the study for you know, both of the data files that we loaded in. And then under that, it has for each variable that we loaded, it made um, for each each column in the in files that we loaded. It made uh, a variable, and uh, and that's either a categorical variable or an numerical variable. Yeah. So in this case, uh, cell line name is a categorical, and the age is uh, well, it's of course uh, numerical. So you see the, the icon. So the two things we need to change. Um, well, that we have to change is the subject ID. So this file does not have subject ID yet. I know it's this one. It's uh, first column subject ID. 
So what I can do is on the right panel where I can make changes to this uh, to this node, I can just uh, add it subject ID. You see the icon change, which indicates that it's uh, a special node. And this, uh, the, the thing about this node is that is that it not is not shown in the in the in the tree, but it is needed for it uh, to work properly. So I'm adding it there, and I also have to add it to the other file. In this case, it's uh, it's called just subject. So that's good. So we have we have the first problem fixed. Of course, we also want to apply some nice structure to this data because if you just load this in like this, then uh, you're not going to uh, have a nice overview of what your data actually is. <clears throat> so I'm not doing this perfectly now, but I'll give you a short uh, view of what you could do. So here we have uh, templates. I've preloaded this one with uh, the trade master tree, which is a, a standard we're using within the trade project. And what these templates do is they add folders based on uh, our conventions. So if, if I apply this template, I will not have two folders, but I'll, I will have many more. So I'll, I'll have a clinical characteristics, which is just an empty folder with, uh, with subjects, uh, things about tumors, metastases, uh, even molecular, pro molecular profiling. So within your institute, it's really good to define such kind of templates over multiple studies. So your users will know where to find what variable in general, where it makes sense. So this, this is why we exactly use these templates. Yeah. So let me just do a rough. I'll add uh, everything from the clinical file to this one. So this is now under the clinical characteristics. And we'll show up there. And uh, non isoquin molecular profiling. We'll go in the other one. Hmm. To the molecular profiling folder. Yeah, great. Oh, did not get there. Mm -hmm. So. Hmm. so. I made some changes to the tree. If you have more time, then uh, you can spend more time at this. We're not going to do that today. So we're just... It's just maybe good to note that you can just by drag and drop reorder, as you just saw. You can rename uh, the variables, you can rename folders, you can even rename variables in there. So if you have oh, yeah. uh, male or female or something, um, you can just rename them to however you want to structure this. Yeah, let's do that. So here we have one example of a very long uh, value. So this this is a categorical with a value organoids, columnar cells with polarized normal brush border and couplet cells, which I think is a bit too long for my taste. So I'm calling this uh, other so to make it a bit shorter. And then I'm using uh, another functionality, metadata text, to give an information about what this actually is. So you saw a few things happen here. On the right, uh, you saw the, the, the window change for adding uh, metadata tags. And on the left, you have now a new node called tags, which will be added to the, uh, to the metadata uh, in, in Transmart. So we'll have a look at uh, what this looks like in, uh, in, in, after we load it. Okay. I think that's it. So let's continue. So I'm closing the arborist by clicking exit. Then it does some, some cleanup and it warns me that I have to uh, save the changes I've made to this if I want to, to keep them because this is all happening in memory at this moment. So what I'm doing, going to do is I'm going to write them to, uh, to the same folder that, that these other files are in within a, in a new subdirectory. And I'm going to uh, to reload from this new uh, location. 
just giving uh, giving me some heads up about where it's loaded what. So you can see text text a text file being written, uh, uh, clinical data files, parameter files, study parameters, word mapping, column mapping. So lots of files. So this is all the mapping files that we showed earlier, and they are now generated by TMTK rather than you having to make those by hand. So let's run the validator again. Oh. That's interesting. Live demonstrations. Okay. I think I know what this is. Let's let's forget about it for now. So the two errors we had about the subject ID, um, that's fixed now. So it's checked uh, whether this file has a, has a this this cell line non with molecular profiling as a subject ID and whether it has only unique values. So that's uh, that's a prerequisite. So it has metadata tags. It has the clinical data file, so everything is all right. Although it's giving a warning, but that's we can ignore that for now. Okay. And now what we have is we have a, a validated study. We've added structure to the to the data. We've saved it to disk, and now we want to load it to Transmart. And for this. Um, we've created the wrapper around Transmart Batch. Uh, usually, you can go into into your terminal, uh, look up the the jar file to to start the command, specify your parameter files that you want to load, and uh, run it from there. But you can also just load it straight from your Jupyter notebook. So in this case, I'm using a, a properties file that points this uh, this study loader wrapper to uh, virtual machine I've running, it's the one you just saw earlier, um, using 16.1. So if we do that, then it's using Transmart Batch 1.1 uh, snapshot, and these are the parameters it's using to start a job, and it's giving some feedback on where it is. In this case, it's uh, quite a small study, so it's, it's quite quick. And it's loaded to both uh, the clinical and the, the metadata tags. So if all went well, then we should now be able to see it here in Transmart. Let me just refresh. Cell lines created for training. That's great. So we have our clinical stuff that we added here. Cell type with the other the, the info from the long name. So it's the metadata we loaded on this specific uh, value. And one thing to note maybe is uh, you see entirely the structure that we just saw in the visual representation within TMTK, um, but you might see that it uh, ignores all the empty folders that we have. So Transmart doesn't load empty folders, and also TMTK will just ignore those. So that's uh, that's uh, why you see those here. Yeah. So everything went well. We loaded the study. We came from um, from Tabular files on disk, and we loaded them into TMTK. We reordered them, and, and we now loaded them into Transmart. Shall yeah. we go back to the presentation at this point? Yeah, I think that's good. So. Let's check if we have any questions asked. So I don't think so. There's nothing in the questions box. There's nothing in the chat box. No. But maybe. Uh, well, it's, there's still time can, for that. And you can help us at a later point if we're missing something. Um, so it was on the demonstration part. One other thing to demonstrate. So what we saw now is really. Um, something you would do as a uh, data curator or a data steward um, if you get the data files from your customers or if you would get the filled in templates from your customers. Um, if you somewhere halfway this process want to work with your um, 
with your data owners and to see if you really curated the data as they would expect it to see in Transmart. You can also take that visual representation that we just saw and load it into the standalone version of the Arborist. So, for example, within the Dutch Health Array CTMM trade project, we are doing that. And then we make a nice a curated version of a study and we give a link to our data owners um, for them to play around and see if we reflected the data as they would like to see it. So they would see such a tree and they would be able to say, okay, well, this looks great, but actually I want the two more information under molecular profiling. And they would just be able to reorder that to give it a different name. So let's remove the two here. And once they've done that, um, they would, if we weren't currently in a, a demonstration environment, they would be able to save the next version of the tree. And then we will be able to take that and use their changes, take their changes and bring that to the, to the server. So this is a really useful way to collaborate with the data owners. So this is a public demonstration instance. Again, we'll share the links to this and you can just play around with it there. Um, one final thing I want to demonstrate is the templates, or actually I'll just like to show them to you. So these are templates that were also developed within this Health Array trade project. Um, and they're available online as a set of public um, um, Excel sheets. Um, and we'll share this again. There's a link here behind this, uh, this little, uh, little text. And there you will see all these clinical templates, which are uh, which all these data templates which are available to you. So you can work with your data owner and provide them a template and let them fill in the clinical data templates for example to see how it should should look like so these templates look like these there's a lot of information here there's a lot of um, comments um, on how to fill this exactly in and here they can help you to fill in how the data tree needs to look like and they can just use excel like they're used to um, and specify okay i need to have a top level node called clinical, clinical characteristics and then under that i want to have a node called subjects and a node called primary tumor, et cetera. And they can provide all kinds of information of this. Um, and once they fill that in, um, it should look like something like this. So they will tell you, okay, within this file, I want to have the second column on this location in the tree. And I want the third column on this location in the tree. So that's very helpful to really bring the curation to the people who understand the data rather than the, the data stewards who are just working to get it in. Um, and this is how the clinical data, the actual, the, the actual data would look like. So that's on the data files. Uh, we'll share those links. Maybe one comment uh, that we can make on future developments. So first of all, uh, as I said in the beginning, we focused our current presentation on Transport 1602. Um, of course, we'll also bring the Arborist to the newer versions of, of um, the Transmart once they're released. Um, but one feature we also want to show here, uh, you can, maybe you can comment more on this, is how you could use uh, the Arborist to um, to yeah. add ontology data to your to your tree. Yeah. So something uh, new in the the, the 17, 2017 release of Transmart is uh, the idea that every node in the tree has a generalized concept. So that's, uh, this, is, this closely resembles the way ontologies are used. Uh, of course, this presents a challenge because <clears throat> you have to do this mapping somewhere. You have to provide the information that uh, the age in uh, this project, in project one, is the same as age in project two. So this is, uh, uh, this is a start we've made with building this in, uh, in the Arborist. <clears throat> On the right, you see uh, on the left, you see just the tree that, that, that you show, saw a moment ago. And on the right, you see also uh, a shared ontology. So in this case, this is a, a company-wide ontology that, that you could be using here. And the way you use this is you click on one of the nodes and uh, search for an ontology term based on its description. And if you select it, then this, uh, this metadata is updated and that's a way uh, 
you can easily in a visual representation do this uh, do this mapping of course it would be better if you can do this all automatically but I, it's uh, our uh, experience that this is uh, this is still a way uh, a way forward for, uh, for for most users okay so that's a short outlook on future developments for the tool set and with that i think we'll uh, end up at the question slides um, so this is uh, the point where i do hope uh, to open it up to the audience if you have any further questions um, this would be a great time to uh, throw them in the chat or in the question window. Um, and Angie, maybe you can help us to make sure that we don't miss anything. But currently, I don't see any questions there yet. Certainly, yes, I don't see any quite yet either. Oh, OK. Well, that's very good. We'll share the slide deck afterwards. Um, and of course, we'll also put our contact details in there so people can always follow up if they have further questions down the road. Wonderful. Um, yeah, thank you. That's all we wanted to share today. OK, great. Thank you so much. And um, I will um, get this recording up on the website soon. And yeah, have a wonderful day. You too. Thank, thank you very much. All right, bye now.